Today, we're comparing the inline four engine versus the boxer four engine. Both are internal combustion engines and both have four pistons, but each engine layout is quite different. So, which type performs better, is smoother, easier to maintain, and sounds better? And why do Subaru and Porsche insist on the Boxer, whereas other car makers prefer different engine layouts? Come with me as we compare the inline 4 versus the Boxer 4. Let's briefly start with the basics. One of the most common engines we see today is the inline four cylinder engine known as an inline four, I four, or straight four. It's mechanically simple, just one cylinder bank with four cylinders mounted in a straight line along one crankshaft. The pistons sit upright and move up and down. On the other hand, a few well known car makers, namely Subaru and Porsche, prefer the Boxer four engine layout instead. A Boxer four engine is also a four-cylinder piston engine, but it has two cylinder banks lying on opposite ends of the crankshaft. Each pair of opposed cylinders moves inwards and outwards at the same time. That's why I call it boxer. It's like a boxer with boxing gloves. For a more detailed video, check out my video on different engine types. Both the inline four and boxer four are based on the same four strokes, intake, compression, power, and exhaust. But because they differ in layout, the inline and the boxer have a different firing in order and therefore differ in engine balance. Here's what I mean. If you count the cylinder from the front end accessory side of the rear flywheel side, you see the inline four fires at one, three, four, and two, whereas the boxer four fires at one, three, two, and four. In each engine design, the primary forces are identical and cancel out but the secondary forces differ between the two engines. The secondary forces result from a difference in piston speed during the top half of crankshaft rotation. In other words, 90 degrees before and after top dead center versus the bottom half. With the inline four, the pistons reach the top or bottom of the cylinder and the secondary forces point outward. This leads to vibrations and less balance. That's why the inline four often needs balance shafts to cancel out vibrations. But with the boxer four, the pistons point away away from each other. This means the forces balance out. And that's the reason why the Boxer 4 is smoother than the inline 4. But this doesn't mean the Boxer 4 is perfect either. The pistons in a Boxer aren't perfectly aligned since they don't sit directly across from each other. So this can create a torque that tends to want to rotate the engine along its vertical axis with rocking motions. Ever wonder why a Boxer 4 has a distinct burble? In fact, owners of Subarus have come to call it the Boxer Burble. Well, actually, a particular tone comes from its unequal length headers. The exhaust design usually pairs well with the engine package and also happens to create the burble sound that fans have come to recognize and love. Let's compare the pros and cons of the inline four and the boxer four. The advantage of the inline four is that it's small and compact, so it can fit easily into most engine bays. It's light in weight because you only have one exhaust manifold. It's simpler and less costly to make because there are fewer moving parts. It's also simpler and less costly to service to fix because the cylinder head is the highest point, so it's easier to access and fix spark plugs in the valve train. So you can see why most major car manufacturers love it and why the inline four is one of the most common engines on the road today. But the inline four also has its disadvantages. For example, the secondary forces are not balanced, so this limits the size of the engine. That's why you rarely see an inline four cylinder engine that exceeds 2.5 or 3 liters. Large four cylinder engines engines often require balancing shafts to cancel the vibration caused by the secondary imbalance. And because the inline sits tall and high, it has a higher center of gravity than the Boxer 4. Now let's compare that with the Boxer 4. From an engineering perspective, the Boxer is the choice if you want smooth acceleration and performance. As I touched on earlier, the reciprocating pistons, they reciprocate horizontally in the Boxer, so they cancel out vibrations. The primary and secondary forces are well balanced, so you'll get less vibration and smoother acceleration. And of course, since the pistons of a Boxer engine lie flat, contrast that to an inline engine where the pistons stand tall and move up and down, the Boxer has a lower center of gravity, which means much better handling, dynamic driving experience, and stability at high speeds in the corners. Also, less weight on the crankshaft means less power loss to rotational inertia. Another advantage with the Boxer is improved thermal efficiency. Because of its layout and construction, coolant flow is better, 
which means heat gets dissipated more effectively. But the Boxer has downsides too. For starters, it's more complex than the inline engine. So understandably, it's more expensive to make. Also, servicing the Boxer engine is technically more challenging since the packaging is tight and many of its components are harder to access. On some engines, you have to drop the engine out of the vehicle to do any type of serious work. And it's not uncommon for Boxers to have issues with oil leaks. And then you have to address the issue with size. The Boxer 4 engine is wider than an inline for, since the cylinders lie flat and are horizontally opposed. So fitting a boxer into a front wheel drive car is more challenging. By the way, contrary to popular belief, the Boxer engine was not the brainchild of Ferdinand Porsche. Actually, it was patented by Carl Benz, who built his first one in 1897. It was called the Benz Contra engine, and it was used in road cars like the Benz Phaeton and the Benz Mallard. But production of the engine ended in 1902, and Benz never used the Boxer engine again. Did you know that Ford once toyed with flat twins in the early days? Chevrolet did too for a time. Take for example the famous Chevrolet Corvair, which came off with a flat six engine. And Volkswagen initially launched its company based on an air-cooled flat four engine when they introduced the original Beetle. And the first Porsche 356 came with a boxer engine which output 35 horsepower. That was back in 1948. But today, Porsche and Subaru are the only large car manufacturers to continue equipping their engines with boxer engines. Porsche is the only car maker that uses the flat eight-shaped opposed piston boxer engine and Subaru is the only car maker that uses the boxer engine exclusively in their entire lineup. Did you know that every Subaru model ever made since Subaru start in 1953 has had a boxer engine and they don't have any plans to change it? Ever wonder why Subaru has stuck it out with a boxer and whether it might change since more plug-in hybrids and electrics are coming to market? Well first Subaru values smooth acceleration. The boxer's lower center of gravity means means a more dynamic driving experience for Subaru's taller all-wheel drive cars with a higher ride height. Take for example the Forester, the Outback, and the Crosstrek. The Boxer also ensures that Subaru's performance sports cars like the WRX and WRX STI remain stable at high speeds when cornering. But it's more than that. Another core benefit is safety. Subaru's Boxer design helps reduce damage in a collision. Since horizontally opposed engines are low in overall height, in the event of a frontal collision, the engine gets pushed under the floor, not into the passengers. So this reduces the risk of injury. Here's a question. Can you turbocharge a boxer? Well, yes, indeed. Let me give you some examples. The Subaru WRX. It features a two liter turbocharged boxer four under the hood. It generates 268 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. It can reach 60 miles an hour in 5.4 seconds. There's also the Subaru Legacy with its 2.4 liter turbo boxer four. We're talking 260 horsepower and it's fuel efficient with 32 miles per gallon on the highway. The most powerful Subaru turbo option is the 2.5 liter Boxer 4 in the Subaru WRX SDI. 310 horsepower thanks to a new high flow intake and low restriction exhaust. It reaches 60 miles an hour in 4.9 seconds. Porsche fans have their favorites too. You have the Porsche 17 Cayman which offers the 2 liter flat 4. Actually Porsche did something unconventional with this one. Previously it had a standard flat 6 but then they downgraded it to a four-cylinder and turbocharged it. It's incredibly powerful, outputting 365 horsepower and 317 pound-feet of torque. By the way, a fun side story, most people assume the sports car was named after the Cayman Islands, but actually Porsche said the sports car was named after a small marine crocodile species, the Cayman, the same one that the Cayman Islands was named after. But don't think that performance and speed are all dependent on a turbocharged flat four. A turbocharged inline four engine can do a lot too. A few years ago, in 2017, the Honda Civic Type R smashed the Nürburgring lap record for front wheel drive cars. It clocked a lap time of 7 minutes and 43 seconds, beating cars like BMW M5, Chevy Corvette Z06 C5, and Porsche Cayenne Turbo S. Its engine, turbocharged inline four, it made 306 horsepower and 295 pound feet of torque. If you missed my video on the Honda Civic Type R, check it out. Well, just two years later, in April 2019, the Renault Megane RS Trophy R set a new all-time record for the fastest front-wheel drive production compact car ever. 
at Nordschleife of the Nürburgring, the new record time, 7 minutes, 40 seconds. And that was accomplished with a 1.8 liter turbocharged inline four that spun out 296 horsepower. This toppled the Honda Civic Type R's 2017 record by three seconds. Both the inline four and boxer four have the same number of pistons. But other than that, pretty much everything else is different. If you want easier and cheaper cost and maintenance, then you'll probably appreciate the inline four more. If sound and smooth ride is your priority, then you'll probably like the boxer more. But now you tell me, what do you think? inline four or boxer four which do you prefer please comment below and share your opinion if you enjoyed this episode please subscribe to my channel for more car technology and history videos thanks for your support